Both my grandfather and I appreciate everyone's well wishes. I mean, truly more than words can express, honestly. Um, posting these stories has become something that he gets really excited to do. In his words, um, in his words, knowing I can finally get the word out on all this weirdness that goes on in the world and not having to worry about the department biting my ass, it's, um, it's good. Feels good. I know I won't be kicking around much longer, but if these folks really enjoy hearing about my cases, I can't think of a better way to spend the rest of my time until I punch my ticket. Make sure you tell them thanks from the old guy for the weird stories. So, uh, the very first, um, first impossible one, that was, uh, what, 68, 67, somewhere in there, around a year after I made Detective, anyway. Anyway, I'm sitting at my desk, and the sergeant comes up, he whispers something to my partner, this guy, uh, Manth. I told you about him before, you know, um, you know what happened to him, so. Sarge whispers to Manth, and, uh, heads back to his office. And Manth, he just kind of hangs his head a bit, asks him what's going on. He stands up, tells me to follow him. So we go to the car, and, uh, on our way to... Wherever we're going, he he, um, gives me a little speech. And now I'm paraphrasing here. I've been a detective for 11 years now, Steve. I've uh, solved a lot of cases. Not the best detective there's ever been, but I am goddamn good at my job. Generally speaking, if there's a murder, I'll get a guy or gal. One time, it even ended up being a dog. You know what I mean? Sometimes, he says. Sometimes, there's cases you can't solve, no matter how, how good you are. Sometimes things just just won't make a lick of sense. Clues will take you to a dead end. The evidence just raise more questions. You know what? When you do a puzzle and sometimes you have the box, you just see what you're supposed to be putting together. It's like doing a puzzle. You know what? What it should look like. You got all the pieces on the table in front of you. They just don't go together. There's no reason why. They just don't. Now the department don't like word of these getting out. You're not under any obligation to not talk about them. Don't think I'm trying to scare you or anything. They just so I'd prefer that you just keep them quiet. Don't, don't want to scare the people, you know. We got a name for them around the department. Just a dumb little name. We call them the impossible ones. That's what they are. No two ways about it. They're impossible. Might have, um, might have heard someone mention them before. I had. and I had. Um, I'd heard the term impossible one in passing. I never really knew what it was about. So Steve... Steve says... Um, he headed that one now. Knew it was just a matter of time until we caught one. Sarge got, got the details from some of the, the unis down there. We drove down to uh, Oak Creek, a farm farmland out there. We had to drive down this long dirt road between two giant plots of corn stalks. Finally, finally this house comes into view. We got the black and whites parked all around, yellow tape, the whole deal. Pull up. The lieutenant was there, and, you know, which, you know, I, I wasn't used to that. Man tells me. Uh, whenever we get a weird one, they send up a higher up. So LT just shakes his head, tells us good luck. So, you know, uh, so we walk we walk past the tape, and everybody's out there doing their jobs. There's a group crowded around this big flagpole they have. So we're walking up to the house to talk to the responding officers. I ever heard some folks talking about how it just, it just doesn't make sense, you know. How was it possible? Stuff like that. So, so right away, I'm um, I'm getting that something is off, but I still don't know why. You know why we're even there. I mean, we get in the house. A few unis are standing around the foyer. This house, it was um, it was it wasn't a nice place. You know, there's no wall. Well, no no drywall. It's just the slats. Like someone had started. Building the house and then giving up halfway through. We go up, we ask for a rundown on what's happened. Two of the officers, they tell them, follow them upstairs. One, one unit says, I've been on the job about two years. I've seen some messed up things, but this has got to be the worst. So they take us up to a bedroom on the second floor, and before we can turn in, the unit says, um, Brace yourself. I don't, I don't remember what I was expecting exactly. Probably a whole lot of blood and guts, you know, something like that, but, you know, there wasn't any, there was no mess, 
room was absolutely immaculate. Like, like they'd gone over it with a toothbrush just before he walked in. The bedroom was empty except for a small, like almost like a TV tray, you know, it stands up. Yeah, there's uh, one of those, and there's, um, there's, well, there's medical supplies on it. Bandages, wraps, scalpel, scissors, sutures, all of them, all of them clean as a whistle. Yeah, but the body, oh, there's a body on the floor, sort of a hallway, sort of uh, halfway leaning against the wall. Feet, um, feet had been sewn on. They were much pale than the rest of his body, you know. Uh, like the feet clearly came from another person. Again, um, there was no blood. At the same time, there was evidence that the, um, the operation, if you uh, want to call it that, happened in that very room. And weirder yet, one of his hands had also been stitched on, but just one of them. The body's right hand, it, um, it, it belonged to its original owner, and it, uh, it had a stitching needle and thread in it, like the son of a bitch had been doing it himself. Problem was, his feet and hand, the one that actually belonged to him, were nowhere to be found. As you know, um, as freaky as this was, it was the smell that was the worst. It was the most rank, putrid, dead body smell I'd ever encountered. Uh, I smelled quite a few. Now, later, they did an autopsy. The uh, well, the cause of death couldn't be determined, but the the level of decomposition on the outside was, um, you know, it was hours. By the time Manth and I showed up on the scene, I don't remember what the call was or, you know, how it was found out that there was a potential murder there. But when we showed up, the body was still fresh. They did the autopsy not long after that. And the decomp on the inside of the body, you know, the organs and all that, um, at least a month. He had been sitting against the wall for a month. I don't know how much you know about human decomposition. Hopefully not much. <laughs> Nobody. But, um, but it happens in stages. See, right after a person dies, the first few days, not too much happens. And they start bloating and all that. After about a week, the skin will start to turn black. Like I said, none of this, none of this happened yet. On the inside, a little after a week, things will start breaking down. Maggots, bugs, insects, all that. They start laying eggs, start feeding on the organs. And the organs, so they start, they start breaking down. They start leaking out of the body. I mean, it sound, <laughs> sounds gross, I know, but, but so, so the, the outside of the body, the outside of the body was fine as far as, as, as decomposition. The inside of the body was just, just, uh, I don't know how to put it. It was just flakes. You know, like dried fruit, his, his lungs, his spleen, his kidneys, his bladder, his stomach. It was all, it was all decomposed. It was covered in creepy crawlers. It, it, it didn't make any sense. It was, it was, drum roll, impossible. Any more than that. Um, no, I said the room was perfectly clean. It was not a drop of blood. It was because the body had been completely exsanguinated. I mean, completely. Body shouldn't have looked the way that it did on the outside, considering what had happened to the inside. If I wouldn't have seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have. <laughs> I would have sworn to you that, uh, you know, like a wax. It was like a wax statue or something. That's that's not the weirdest thing, <laughs> not, not to me at least. So, uh, so the outside, when we pulled up there, there was um, there was a group of unis gathered around the flagpole. We were done, you know. We we're Done looking around the inside of the house, trying to make heads or tails of what happened. And the folks that brought us into the house told us to, to follow them out. We get down to the flagpole, and this this thing's big. It must have been maybe 25, 30 feet tall. Big as the kind you'd see at a school. And we, we walk up. We kind of get everyone to clear a path for us so we can see what all the commotion's about. Man's walking ahead of me, and I just, I just hear him say, Jesus Christ. I look around him, I see what everyone's looking at. Well, there's a body at the base of the flagpole. I don't mean next to it, I mean... Nah, I don't mean near it. Flagpole had gone through the man's lower sternum. Blood had pooled around the area. 
by the looks of it, the man hadn't, um, he hadn't been dead for longer than a few hours. Now, after the fact, we learned that the flagpole had been on that property since the 1960s. At least, on paper, it hadn't been replaced or anything since then. There were two flags at the top, an American flag and our state flag. Both of them were blowing in the wind. They were clean, besides the, the normal weather wear a flag gets. And they, were, they were both clean. So the flagpole, a little dirt here and there, maybe, but, um, well, uh, for a body to have been impaled by it and for it to have slid down the flagpole, both it and the flags should have been, should have been covered in blood and, and guts and... Well, there's no way anybody had, had lifted the flagpole from the ground and then dropped it on him. There's, there's just no way. Craziest thing about that one. The guy had died from a brain aneurysm. And, um, and before I forget, the guy on the flagpole was the owner of the property. The guy inside, the one sewing on new hands and feet for himself, never identified. And neither were his extremities. My grandpa then said, Well, now that you know the first one, the next time you come over, I'll tell you about the very last one. Don't worry, though. There's still a few in between them. I was also considering putting a call out to some colleagues. I'm sure there's cases in other states, other departments, even. The ones I've never heard of. Hey there, kids, and happy holidays. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And I just wanted to tell you guys thank you for watching tonight's video. If you enjoy watching videos here on YouTube, then you should check out the Mr. Creepy Pasta Storytime Podcast, which is available on Spotify and on iTunes and on Google Play and everywhere like that. If you enjoy listening to Mr. Creepy Pasta Storytime Podcast, you'll enjoy watching it on YouTube because it's the same show. You guys are both hearing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Also, thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon or on Popbase. You guys who are the top supporters on Patreon, especially, thank you so much. Like Joey Gilbert. Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Chaminsky, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kyle, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Muehlmeister, Eliminator 86, Nubsky, Finley E. Hopkins, Steampunk Sinner, Rafael Rodriguez, Optimistic Avocado, and Dr. Strawberry. Everyone there, as well as in the description down below. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to also follow me on Popbase, where you can get a couple of different updates here and there and play games along with me, then you can do so on your phone. It's on Android and on Apple. And if you guys are looking for something like a hot beverage, such as, say, a tea for the cold winter months, then my wife is still selling teas over at etsy.com slash shop slash tea including a Mr. Creepypasta tea that has me on it, dabbing. Don't actually, actually, if you do order that tea, request that sticker because we made it, but she didn't want me to put it on the, on the tea. She said it went professional. I think it's the, whatever. Check back throughout the entirety of the holiday season for more horror stories every single day. Forever. Sweet dreams, kids.